Yeah. And it just keeps coming back to this, like not thinking past the first order consequence, right? It's like just the first order is like, I want my home and paycheck to go up, to go up based in money terms. Yes. <laughs> but not looking at and this is why I always talk about this. It's, it's meta when you start to think about money. It's you have to look at what is looking to understand the truth of what's happening. Um, and so we should, I mean, again, if you just think about it, reason from first principles, we're trading and innovating to create more with less, to accomplish greater results with less efforts. That is the point. That is the meaning of economization, right? That is the word economy. We should or would expect prices to decline over time if we are successfully economizing human action at scale. Um, but you know, we need to part of doing that, and this is where it gets kind of murky. You needed faster money, right? So we needed to actually, to your point, credit was so great. It contributed to growth initially because ledger entries are much faster than gold settlement, right? If we can just send a letter to the Bank of England or whatever communication method they're using, we can settle our accounts through this intermediary much faster, much more efficiently with greater economization than we could actually shipping gold to one another and securing gold. So this credit money enabled this economic boom because it economized the money function but it 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 um, almost defeated itself, right? It defeated its own economization in the long run, as we as we get into debt based money itself. I think it was World War One that broke the system. I think the system was on track, probably to maybe 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 England couldn't hold on to their monopoly of the financial system. Maybe it would have broken at some point. But as long as there was the insistence on convertibility at a fixed ratio, I think that system could have gone on, but it took something as massive as World War I to just break our connection with convertibility. I'd say like, if there's one theme in this book that like really hit home with me as a Bitcoiner was the, the notion of convertibility. That convertibility is the average everyday person's ability to issue a vote of no confidence to the government. Yes. And you can do it every day, any day of the week. And people can say, I've had this discussion with people, I'm like, well, we get voting. You know, voting is a, but mm. you get to vote once every four years, maybe once every two years. Gold standard convertibility is your ability to issue a vote of no confidence all day, every day, at least every day that the bank is open. And that is the ultimate and possibly the only check you might need unless you're facing a tyrant. You know, one one sort of like qualifier that Pally repeats in this book is that managed economies, socialist economies can work under a total dictatorship mm -hmm. because the, the populace doesn't really have the right to like, they don't have freedom as consumers. And so, you know, all of these all of these totalitarian policies about money can work in a totalitarian state. But if there's any freedom, if the consumers have any freedom at all, then it doesn't, it doesn't work. Mm. Yeah. But gold standard. Yeah. Convertibility, proof of keys. They're the same thing to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I view convertibility as effectively the ability to call the bluff of government or a bank, right? If, we're, we're again conducting commerce in this credit money, which is this warehouse receipt to real money, which would be gold mm -hmm. in this instance. If there's ever a lack of confidence, as you described, in the custodian or the government, um, you can effectively express that thesis, that express that lack of confidence by pulling money out. Right? You, you, you're you're taking energy out of this institution that you don't trust through convertibility. And that is precisely why banks suspend convertibility first. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and the suspension of convertibility, the gold standard had like some of the weaknesses were that it was, it was, um, it was a commitment mechanism, meaning we will commit to this policy 
of convertibility, but it had these escape clauses. And one of the escape clauses that everyone understood was war. But in having escape clauses such as war, it actually incentivizes war. Exactly. Because it, it's, the pre, it's the one precondition that allows you to suspend the rules. 